Okay, hello, I am Kenneth Cousy. I'm a professor of medicine and the chief of the division of endocrinology and diabetes at the University of Gainesville in Florida, the United States. And we are here today in Pune at the Third International Diabetes Experts Conclave um, with a group of experts discussing the role of fatty liver disease in obesity and type two diabetes. And we are here with Dr. Sarin, who is an international expert from New Delhi. Yes, good morning, Ken. And uh, I am Shiv Sarin. I work in New Delhi at the Institute of Liver and Biliary Sciences, which is a dedicated liver university. And my area of interest is liver diseases. And uh, I am very happy to be a speaker here at this IDEC conference. So we have been asked to help general uh, practitioners and endocrinologists in the diagnosis and management of patients with fatty liver disease. And we just participated in a symposium in which Dr. Serin taught us how to uh, diagnose and manage patients with fatty liver disease. And I gave a perspective from the endocrinologist. I am an endocrinologist and diabetologist, and we see many patients with fatty liver disease and at risk of cirrhosis. So the key message for the general practitioner is to begin becoming aware that this is a very important problem. Patients who don't have diabetes and are obese, if they have a fatty liver, increase their chance of developing type two diabetes. And if you have type two diabetes and have a fatty liver, you are at risk of damaging that liver. So the number one thing you have to do is think in fatty liver the American Diabetes Association recommend that if you identify fat in the liver or elevated ALT, you should begin evaluating your patient for fibrosis. So that is a very important thing, and Professor Sarin is an expert in the diagnosis of these patients. So what would you do uh, if you are referred a patient whom there's a suspicion of having uh, NASH, which is the severe form with inflammation of fatty liver. What would you do uh, to sort this out? Uh, the problem is, as uh, Dr. Kusi said, uh, one billion, mind my word, one billion people have fat in the liver globally. It means one in at least six. So be aware you may be one of them or your patients. To have everyone is scared is not the right idea. We have to identify and see who are those who have a higher risk of liver disease. So there are three parts which you have to understand. Some who have got just fat in the liver, which is benign fat in the liver, possibly. Some those who have fat and inflammation. And third is fat, inflammation, scarring, and cirrhosis. So these stages are called as stage one fibrosis, stage two fibrosis, stage three or stage four. So liver has mild or early fibrosis, that is F1, F2 and F3, that is stage two or three. And I would say stage three would be something like an advanced fibrosis and stage four is cirrhosis. None of you or your patients should have cirrhosis. That is the whole idea. And how do you find that out? So let's say India, 25% of the population, and I think US, 30% of the population has fat in the liver. Of those, about 10% have disease. And that disease can be detected by some symptoms which the patients come. Like patients say, I have excessive fatigue, or I have a pain in the upper quadrant. These are very common things, but still, this is the way the patient presents, fatigue, lethargy, pain in the right upper quadrant, and sometimes loss of appetite. These are early symptoms. Of course, not the symptoms of liver disease, mind you. Then you do the lab tests, and the lab test will say that yes, his liver enzymes, the common ones, the markers of injury are SGOT or AST, SGPT or ALT. If they are above 30, 
and in India limit is 40, think that they may have some problems. Third is high cholesterol or triglycerides and maybe LDL and low HDL. So these may be others. And certainly if the blood sugar is high and you are in pre-diabetic or a diabetic stage. Now to cap it all, if you have a family history of metabolic syndrome or diabetes, hypertension, heart disease, stroke or cancers or PCOD or something which is kidney disease like uh, severe advanced kidney disease, you may be one of those with metabolic syndrome. So, if there is a family history and one of your tests are like this, you are high risk. Now, what do you do? You go to a general physician like one of you maybe, or you go to a diabetologist, what do they do? To filter out those who are on higher risk, you can do simple tests like a FIB4. FIB4 is your SGPT, SGOT, your platelets and age. And there is a simple calculator by which you can calculate or there is another score called NAFLD non-alcoholic fatty liver disease score NAS score which is also inclusive of six simple variables that includes diabetes. So you say that okay my FIB4 is less than 1.3 or my FIB4 is above 3.4 I am very clear I have advanced disease or I have very little liver disease. The problem is 80% of us will fall into the category between so 1.3. That's what happens to us. So you're in the middle. What other tests would you recommend? Yes. If you are in the middle, don't just need to rush up to a specialist. Your diabetologist, your general physician, your internist can certainly do another test which you can either have in your own city or around called a fibro scan or a liver stiffness test. If your liver is stiffness, stiffness is like you know, my hand is soft and this is hard. So softer your liver, better it is. The normal value of liver stiffness is less than six. You know there were days when you were doing ultrasound and CT, these are tests which were, now stiffness is the test. So your ultrasound may show fat in the liver, but if the stiffness is more than eight, normal being less than six, there is a little concern. This may be stage one to stage two fibrosis. If his stiffness is higher, certainly it is a concern, no doubt. So you get your liver stiffness measured. If it is above eight, then you possibly need a gastroenterologist. You need you need them because they are going to talk with the patient. The test gives you a probability. Don't tell if you have a high number that they have cirrhosis because there are some caveats. So the only way to confirm that yes. would be with a liver biopsy discussed with the hepatologist, right? So your doctor might say you need a biopsy, but nobody wants a biopsy. They're all scared, you know, that biopsy can cause this and that. But there are stages where we have to understand, you have to reverse the thing. So now, once you are above eight, you have a high risk of fibrosis being there, then you need treatment. The questions will come to us, should everybody get a biopsy? No. And I will therefore need Ken to help us whether any lifestyle changes, whether any modifications in uh, uh, diet can help that and then we can cover specific diseases. So Ken, so what, what would you do? Would you do immediately biopsy in the US? No, no. In the US what happens again depends, anytime you do a test it is because you're going to do something differently. In the US we do a test, a biopsy, when it's a high risk person particularly if they're young, in which it's gonna really tell us what the long-term risk of damaging the liver. Because then we find that a biopsy confirms the diagnosis because neither the blood test or the uh, elastography test, the fiber scan, are perfect. Occasionally, they are wrong and the patient doesn't have advanced liver disease. But if they confirm liver disease, we found that it's a very motivating because then you can change the trajectory instead of ending up with cirrhosis. Lifestyle is very important, changes things, and we use some medications. But in India, what are the three things about the diet that you would recommend your, your, your practitioners to tell the patients? Yeah, I would recommend first to achieve normal weight. And normal weight is simple. Uh, you can either use any calculator, it's all there, but height minus 100. If you are 170 centimeters, you should not be more than 70 kilograms. 
so height minus 100 is your ideal weight so please ask your patients and that's if you simple are there, i like simple. it it's very simple height minus and if you are a female 10 percent less so sorry so for what, being what gender are, what specific are, what are the things that are most damaging in the diet in india for a fatty liver yeah. a diet in india i would say is the late night Food. It never used to be. Indians used to be very, very regular that you won't eat after sunset and you will start. That's your an day. American thing. Don't copy everything from yes, America. Yes, so don't copy because 2017 Nobel Prize is on clock genes. What you eat is important, but when you eat is also equally important. So you need to see that you eat early and, of course, you have to have your own balance sheet like a chartered accountant. The intake and output every day is balanced. First reduce weight, then maintain weight. In the United States, we have a problem with carbohydrates. Is that a problem here in India too? Yes. I think it is a problem, especially with the under, I would say, privileged or those who are not so educated, I would say. They There's would try and consume more, more of rice carbs and, and yes, rice and all that. And there are certain societies like in the southern India which are rice eaters so I think that has a high it's a high glycemic uh, index now you mentioned in your talk something very interesting that even some individuals are not frankly obese but they yes. are what they call Nash but are lean so we found that they're insulin resistant what would you tell these individuals yes. to do this is a concept which everyone and this is emerging and contentious normal weight or low weight or lean NASH is something which is very important. Means the person has a BMI of 23 and he still has NASH, he still has fat in the liver, he still has fibrosis. What do you do? In them, this is more like genetic and there are two important, one of them is PNPLA3 that is a gene which is a rapid fibrosis gene. So you have to see whether the family has that gene and also whether any modifiers like cholesterol triglycerides can be reduced. We have a large series, about 1000 liver biopsies we published. Of them, those who had lean NASH means less than 23 BMI or about 25 BMI, the extent of fibrosis in the liver is same. So how do you treat them? It's a challenge. At the, as of now, you have to use your muscles so that the insulin resistance is decreased by exercising or by doing running and others. So exercise is, is the key in those. Is the key in those, and you may use a little bit of coffee. That not that I have any. And avoid steaks. excessive alcohol. And avoid alcohol. One question. So, um, so for a patient without diabetes, the guidelines recommend a little bit um, um, some pharmacological interventions. I'm going to mention some diabetes medications. Tell us about vitamin E. Well, vitamin E is an antioxidant, has been used and has been extensively published that vitamin E can help in reducing inflammation in the liver, normalizing the high enzymes, and maybe some reduction in fibrosis. So we give 400 milligram, the published dosages are 800, but we will give 400 milligrams a day. We are worried about prostate cancers or some cardiac events with long-term use of vitamin E. So I would be happy giving a lower dosage. My own choice is another drug which is anti-TNF, pentoxifilin, very cheap, very simple, decreases TNF, decreases liver fat and insulin resistance. There are not many drugs. So weight reduction exercise is the backbone on which we can add drugs. Sometimes if there is a, uh, you know, uh, early diabetes or pre-diabetic state or others, then you can use metformin and it has helped. However, we have Ken who is an expert on diabetes globally recognized. We would ask him. Yeah, what so do you do I, of course we, I, uh, because I see a lot of people with pre-diabetes who the rate of diabetes progression is faster if you have a fatty liver. And I see a lot of people with diabetes and NASH and fibrosis. We tend to use diabetes medication. So metformin is our background medication, treats the diabetes. I know liver doctors have experience, helps with uh, liver cancer and may help with uh, NASH too. Although uh, prior studies have not been as positive, but 
we have more experience with pyoglitazone in which we use the max dose of 45. Wasn't that a New England paper? Correct, correct. Yes. So in 2006, Alone in 2006. Yes. 2006, we did a small study that showed benefit and then we did a three-year study that we published in the Annals of Internal Medicine in 2016 and now we have another study in diabetes care coming out combining with vitamin E that didn't add to pyoglitazone much but the three studies with pyoglitazone have been pretty consistent in which 50 to 65 percent of the patients have what we call resolution of NAS. It means that the pathologist looks at the biopsy and they don't see the active inflammation anymore. Fibrosis doesn't progress or might improve a little bit. That's a little bit harder, but the active disease goes down. So what I recommend is to use, start with 15 milligrams. If the patient doesn't develop ankle swelling, uh, which happens in one out of 20 patients, uh, then we may bump it up to 30 milligrams. With 30 milligrams, we think that we are at the dose that is beneficial and showed benefit in a non-diabetic study called PIVENS. And you, would you, in the long term, want to watch, uh, make sure that you don't give it to people who are very heavy with body mass indexes above 40 or that have a history of fractures because there's a little bit more of uh, uh, fractures and or a history of bladder cancer. Although 18 or 23 studies are negative, we don't want to add an offender to somebody with a history of bladder cancer. And then there are other new diabetes medications that are being tested. Um, but again, I think that from your vast experience, the key thing is working in a multidisciplinary team with a diabetologist, a nutritionist, and of course, a liver doctor. So if you want to close, what is our final advice as the uh, expert here in India on NASH? Well, uh, that's a tough question. There are very many things I would like to say. First, your weight. Second, your liver enzyme. If your SGPT or ALT is above 30, not 40, be aware. If it is higher, uh, then certainly. Begin thinking NASH. Begin thinking about NASH. Every year in the annual health checkup, get your liver fat estimated, and if fibrosis and fat is there, try to reverse it. Don't let it go to cirrhosis. Fourth, maybe more of sprouts and more of vegetables in the diet. Be natural, you know, like Indians were. Be natural rather than all cooked food, so that all these change your gut microbiome, which is the basis. So gut bacteria, the leakiness of the gut decreases when you have butyrate in the bowel and which is produced by sprouts. So try and have more of these. Uh, and lastly, don't make yourself guilty by having alcohol and NASH. That is the worst part. I think uh, be aware also that your children, when you are overweight, do not get this disease. So be protective for the next generation. These are my messages. Yes. Exercise. And if you are in trouble, for diabetes control, do take help of a diabetologist, and the go. two have to work together. Correct, exactly. A healthy lifestyle, exercise, go to your doctor, and again, make sure your children don't get overweight or obese, so you give them a bright future. Well, thank you. Thank we you. We really had a good time. Thanks. Great. Thank you.